welcome everyone this is a uh, part two of my uh, wireless trolling motor project this is my modified Minn Kota Endura 30 pound truss motor converted uh, from tiller to uh, wireless has been working flawlessly I've been out for about two hours right now at 60% speed I'm doing a circle but uh found that it's uh, kind of hard to tell in which direction I'm going. I'm going to have to put the tiller handle back on to at least give me a, a visual of where the propeller is pointing. All wired. But now I just need to figure out how to mount it to the front of the cabot because I got my outboard my Suzuki. I'm gonna have it on the back and then put the trolling motor on the front for fishing. Working like a charm. And this is off left, right, and reverse. So this is what I built out of plywood and 2x4 to uh, mount the trolling motor on the front of the cabot. And uh, it goes up in an angle so I had to put like uh, steps underneath with pads and I'm going to use like bungee cords to strap it down with some D-rings. Um, I had to change the shaft also of the trolling motor, it's 30 inches too short. Um, I got me a 42 inch shaft and which you have to uh, heat up and heat up where the threads go to be able to remove it and uh, I'm using my torch right here um, and it's, uh, it's pretty hard it's really really good in there so I had to take the whole motor out the whole components and still broke off of me but you just keep on cooking that thing and eventually the threads are gonna come off I use a flathead screwdriver and then I just pry the pieces of threads off and then you gotta clean it real good and put your new shaft in there with epoxy I use some JB weld epoxy on the threads and be all set Uh, here's the trolling motor and the cabot mount together. Um, I'm gonna be able to pull it back and make it rest on top there. Put a stud in a wig knot in case the clamps come loose. I don't want to fall in the water. And uh, this is how it's gonna be riding. Put some melt brackets there, make it stronger too. And because the nose of the cabot starts to rise up, I had to put these steps underneath to keep it level. And this is the down position, the tiller handle. I turn it around 360 degrees so it faces me. Okay, you can use any battery you want, but uh, what I did here basically is uh, I'm using a 60 amp relay to cut off the ground and I got a fuse box over here for everything and uh, 
these pulse width modulators, no secret, everybody using it. But uh, what I'm about to do is uh, turn it wireless. Um, I cut off the reverse and forward switch. Um, and uh, the on and off button. So all I gotta do is uh, control that uh, with a wireless uh, relay. This is the pulse width modulator without the cover and the potentiometer switch on the left and the reverse forward on the right. Um, on the potentiometer, you cut up two wires, red and black, which are on and off. And uh, the square switch, reverse forward, just cut it off completely. Not gonna need that. And uh, to control the pulse width modulator uh, wirelessly, I'm using uh, two two channel remote control relays. Um, they're used to um, open gates, and garage doors, or uh, turn lights on and off. Uh, the problem of having two is they each come with a single remote with two buttons, but you can later, I later got a, a new remote that has the four functions in them because you need four functions left right reverse forward on and off so one of them is going to turn it on and off and do reverse and forward and the other one is going to do left and right i first purchased a single one for channel but you cannot i want left and right to toggle so you cannot program them individually so that's why i have to get them two later separate because i want left and right to be toggled only momentary and this is the four channel remote you see the four buttons that came with the four channel unit but uh, I had to go with two two of two channels and I got two remotes so but later on they sell these uh, programmable four channel button controls then you can program so I'm gonna program a single one to control both use double-sided tape to stick them onto the battery and they're close to the pulse width modulator so the wiring will be easy these uh, wireless uh, relays they come with instructions on how to wire them but uh, basically I got the top one right here um, the top one's going to control on and off I got the black and the red wire that relay is going to control on and off and then the one on the bottom is gonna do it's gonna be uh normally close will be forward and then when i activate it it will be uh, reverse because it goes to uh the wires for the pulse width modulator that that switch remember that black switch that used to be uh the reverse forward switch so i just gotta wire the steering motor left and right these two relays are gonna do left and right and they come with a diagram uh, how to um, wire it to an electric motor and pretty much you uh, bridge it like put it um, into a Y and it goes to the motor these two wires will go to the motor and in the middle in between of them you put the power supply and the power supply is gonna be just three volts what's well, coming from my small pulse width modulator I'll be able to uh, adjust the power supply to this and then this Y wires going to the motor and when I flick it it'll go left or right. This is the tiny pulse width modulator and this is what's going to supply power to that lower wireless uh, relay to uh, control the steering. working great with two uh, separate uh, two channels instead of one single four channel because now my steering toggles and that's exactly how I wanted it to work. Okay, 
Okay, the wireless relays come with this little jumper for the pins, and that's how you program. Well, really not program, but how you tell them if you want them to toggle to be momentarily when you press the button, or if you just want them to, when you press the button, they'll be like on and stay on. So I didn't want my steering to, if I press the B, it'll, the steering will stick and it'll, it'll keep on going, you know? I wanted to toggle once I release my finger, it had to stop. So that's why I'm using two instead of a single four channel. Because now I can just put the jumper on one of the wireless relays and then the other one with no jumper. And uh, what I'm using to steer the motor is a Power Wheels gearbox. Twelve volt motor, and uh, happens to be almost the perfect size for the shaft. I did have to drill it a little bit to get the shaft through. Uh, one inch and one eighth. And uh, if I can show you here. Uh, I just had a cut. Lot for his collar to fit in there. Can't do it with one hand, but there it go. Just basically, it, it free spins right here. But uh, once I put the, this is a stuck, um, this is what you use to control the height of your, uh, the motor. I just had to grind it a little bit all around so it can fit into the power wheels uh, um, shaft thingy. And uh, that goes into the groove and it locks it to the shaft, right? Right there. And I had to do this tighten this so now it's fixed to the shaft. Didn't tighten it enough. See, now it's fixed to the shaft. So, all I had to do was now secure the gearbox and so it stays still. And what turns is the shaft. So, I open it up and I drill this piece of wood. Um, I just open the, the gearbox and uh, remove all the gears. And I put three screws through the cover into the wood block. That happens to be the perfect width of the bracket. So that when I lower it into the bracket, when I lower it into the bracket, it'll, it'll stay there secure. Let me see if I can show you that. But yeah, I can't do it one handed. So see now it would spin like that. But with that piece of wood, it'll, it'll slide. I got it at the perfect size. And now uh, the gearbox won't go anywhere. And this came out on the... There it go. Now I'm tightening the collar. Now the gearbox is fixed to the bracket. But you need this clamp here now. You need an inch and an eight clamp because this, this is what controls the height now. It has to be something narrow because you can't use this curled collar. This is what originally was there to control the height. So now this is the height. 
and it's uh, thin you can see so uh, it's you know keeps a low profile So as I turn it now the gearbox is what turns the motor and if you supply 12 volts to that it's gonna fly that's why you need a small speed controller and I'm running that with three volts with only three volts and that um, I'm sure it's like about the right speed It's probably about, but I can control. I can control the speed here with the uh, lower a little more, so it goes slower. See, it goes slow now, very slow. That's why I put that uh, speed controller in there because I want it to go slow or fast. And this is the main switch here, and that's uh, how I can cut off the battery completely, all power. From the system and uh, uses very low current you can see uh, small fuses that I use 3 amp 7 amps 30 amp is for the motor itself that's the power to the pulse width modulator <laughs> 